This is Joe McPhee for the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame induction profiles. And my guest is Tony Kletchen. Welcome, Tony. Thank you. So, tell me how you got started in baseball. I started in 1958 uh, as a minor player with uh, Grandview Minor Ball under the coaching of Rudy Nervous. Okay. He was an influence. Well, he was my first coach, and that's how I kind of got involved in, in baseball. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the minor baseball structure then in Grandview? Uh, we had teams at uh, the 12-year-old level, 14-year-old level, and the 16-year-old level. So uh, there was a fair amount of minor ball at that time. And you played uh, in the provincial tournaments, or was there a provincial structure that you... Uh, when we got to Midget, they were, there was provincial playoffs, and that's when we got involved provincially. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, was there senior baseball in Grandview at that time? Well, there was a small amount of senior baseball. This was after the demise of the Maroons and uh, the Grandview Lakers were just getting going in about 1960. All right, and what, what league was that? The Grandview Lakers played in the Northwest League for a number of years before they got involved in the Manitoba Senior Baseball League. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, what age then did you start playing senior ball? I think I started at uh, 17. And you had quite a lengthy career. I, yeah, I did. I, I was pretty lucky. I was I got to play till 1992, okay. so that was some 35, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And in quite a few places around the province. Yes, uh, I started my baseball, as you know, in Grandview. But then, when I took on a teaching career, I uh, ta I got to play baseball in Rossburn. We got a team going there. And from there, I was lucky enough to be picked up by a number of the communities that uh, entered provincial play, namely Angusville, Binscarth, Nipua. Mm -hmm. So they must have went to some uh, provincial and uh, Western Canadian corners? Yes, we, uh, uh, we pr I uh, was involved in five Western Canadian, or uh, sorry, five provincial tournaments, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I think two Western Canadian and one national. Oh, That's right. Where did you go for nationals? Uh, for nationals, we played in New Westminster, British Columbia. All uh, right, and that, was that for a provincial all-star team? Or yes, that was a that was with the Manitoba Senior Baseball League. Yes. Right. And what uh, what position did you normally play? Uh, I was a utility player, so I played all the positions. All the positions. Yes. All right. Not at one time. No. <laughs> Did you take a turn on the mound? Yes, I did. Okay, and what, what were your pitches that you threw? Uh, hopefully strikes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have, I had a curve ball, a slider, and a straight ball. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't necessarily call it a fastball. No. Okay. And what were some of the, the changes that you saw over the years from the time you started to the time you finished in baseball, how it was played? And Probably the biggest change is the opportunity that young players have today. Uh, the leagues that are well organized today give young players a great opportunity to play the game. Elite players have an excellent opportunity with co uh, scholarships uh, down south, plus the elite programs that the province offers. Uh, so that's one of the big changes that I definitely do see. Good. What about on the field? Uh, on the field, probably one of the things that uh, teams don't have today that uh, we had it in our day was the number of games that they played. We, we had a very active summer of baseball, started probably a long weekend in May and continued right till September. So it was nothing for a team to play uh, 40 to 60 games in a season. Oh, certainly the equipment today is uh, much better than yeah. what we had in our day. But uh, in our day, we had good equipment, too. Uh, certainly we started with the wooden baths, moved to aluminum, and they've made the complete cycle that now teams are going back to the wooden bath. Right. So did you find that aluminum bath made you a better hitter? Uh, certainly uh, you were able to handle inside pitches better. Right. Okay. Good. And uh, what 
fields, what about conditions of fields? Have they improved over the years? Well, dramatically. Mm -hmm. Certainly the facilities that we uh, have the kids play on today are much better than in our day. Yeah. Well, now, you, speaking of fields, you were involved with the Canwest Stadium in some capacity, were you? Not the, not the, uh, no, not the Can West. Oh. I was involved actually with uh, the Pan Am Games, oh. and uh, it was a volunteer at the baseball facility in uh, Winnipeg, and was responsible for looking after the mound and home base area, and oh. really enjoyed that. Okay. Have you done that type of work before? Yes, at home at Grandview, and when I was in Rossburn, uh, did a lot of it because. We were responsible for field maintenance and making sure that it was ready for a ball game. So that's the difference again between uh, today and uh, yesteryear that now the players have the field ready for them. We have to prepare our own field. Mm -hmm. Good. So who were some of the uh, top competitors that you played against? Then? Oh, there were a lot. Uh, I, uh, I really don't want to mention any names because I will leave some out and they may be offended, but... Uh, I wasn't one of the top competitors, but, uh, but there were a lot through Ben Scarth, Angusville, Macaulay, Brandon, Nipua. They all had excellent ball players, and uh, they were all a challenge and great competitors. Well, you managed to make a few all-star teams in the league, so you weren't too far behind there as far as playing was concerned. Well, maybe that was political. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure not. So, okay, so... Uh, now, since you retired from playing, what have you been involved in baseball? I'm still involved uh, with grassroots programs in the province. I'm the Parkland representative on the grassroots committee provincially. Mm -hmm. What they are responsible for is introducing various programs to communities in the Parkland and throughout the province. But I'm responsible for the Parkland region, so that's to give me a, a foot in the door with baseball. I an active umpire in the Parkland region. I also conduct a winter ball program in Dauphin uh, where we run uh, basically skills clinics for 10 weeks in the winter with two age categories. So I'm still involved in the game. Very much so, yeah. Now you were also active as a teacher in phys ed and, and in coaching a great deal, but uh, at that time, there was probably no high school baseball. High school baseball is very popular now. Uh, I, I see that the game is certainly being introduced into the high school and has become very popular, which is a good move as long as it does not interfere with the midget program. Uh, certainly, uh, I know here in Dauphin that uh, the uh, high school ball is very active and they've got quite a number of players, but then when you go to have players at the midget program, uh, a lot of the players that play high school ball are not continuing on in the midget program, and I certainly wish that they would. Good. Well, thank you very much, Tony. Thank you. My guest has been Tony Kletchen. Tony was an uh, infielder for 32 years for teams in Grandview, Rossburn, Binscarth, Angusville, and Nipawa. He was on five Senior B Championship teams, named an MSBL first or second All-Star team for several years. He was a member of two team Manitoba squads at the Western Canadian Championship and of one squad at the Nationals in Westminster. He coached minor and senior teams, organizer of the Parkland Minor Baseball and Provincial Grassroots Delegate. He later became involved in the baseball facility maintenance at uh, Can West Global Park in 1999 for the Pan Am Games. Tony was inducted into the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame in 2002.